oh, you probably wanted a failure story. I mean, everybody likes a nice failure story. And this one actually is good because it wasn't a failure later. It was a failure before. So I'm going to go over what type of property it was, why the deal failed, where there could have been things that could have been done differently. Um, maybe on my end, maybe not. Um, but as you may know, I am a licensed agent as well as an investor my whole life. So when I'm bidding on properties that are on the MLS, I am the agent as well. So a lot of that is kind of done in tandem, but being the buyer and being the agent uh, can sometimes be a little difficult. The other side sometimes forgets that I'm not representing a buyer, that I'm representing myself, meaning I'm going to be much tougher than I would be than uh, a regular buyer. And that doesn't mean that if I have a buyer or an investor that I'm not always advocating for them. It's just that I have a lot more leeway for myself. I can say what I want. I can be much tougher, whereas a client may not want to lose the deal. I don't care if I lose the deal. I'm making sure that all the boxes are checked. And that's eventually why the deal failed. Um, so I'll give you some background. I live in a town called Mendham, New Jersey. Uh, I live right near the downtown, which means I live in the borough. Um, and I actually live very close to the investment property that I was under contract on. The interesting thing is that I was under contract on the building next door uh, about a year and a half ago, and that failed also for very similar reasons. So the original building that failed, we were three days from closing. We still hadn't figured, we were waiting on a chimney estimate, got the chimney estimate, it was 25 grand. I had a very good deal on the place, but when the chimney estimate came in at 25 grand because it was all falling down, I asked the seller, who was also the attorney in that case, if he wanted to contribute. I didn't say I wanted the whole thing. I said, are you willing to contribute? And he decided to cancel. I always take the out if somebody gives me an out. Okay, I'm out. That property did sell and nobody's done anything with it for a year. It's still sitting there uh, with both commercial spaces vacant and the retail unit. Uh, residential unit on top is still rented. So that was a mixed use. The building that I was just most recently under contract was right next door to that. And that was uh, a quasi mixed use. And this is not contained in the same building. So it was a building up front that used to be commercial that was transitioned to residential. I was going to short term rental that. Um, and that property was in very good shape on the inside. It was renovated uh, with historical standards. But when I did the inspection, that's where everything started to go wrong. Generally, still a very nice property up front. Uh, but then there was another property in back, which is why I like the property so much. Uh, and the other property was a commercial property with a lot of parking, uh, but they had never done anything with the property. So we, I knew that part was going to be in more shambles. But just P.S., uh, in the MLS, there was no mention of as is. Uh, I don't buy as is properties generally. Uh, I am fine with my experience. Um, but I'm always going to kick the tires. I'll look at them sometimes. Um, but when somebody's declaring as is, the price better be very good for me to go in. And I was paying a lot for this property. If you compare them both, I was under contract for $450 uh, on the first one. It was very, it was smaller. You know, it was just two kind of one ish room offices and then a residential unit of one one upstairs. And then this latest one, I was under contract for $700. They had originally started at $799. They were down to $749. I had it under contract at $700, um, but I still in, intended to do all of my due diligence, kicking all the tires, because the way that I had it worked out, my long-term rent, if I rented the residential, would have been around four grand. If I crushed it on short term, I could have been around six to eight grand. So I was kind of feeling that out. And then I was actually going to use the back portion for myself, but pay myself about $1,800 in rent. So I was looking at about $5,800. I was going to be somewhere in the neighborhood of, of doing better than break even with my own contribution um, based on the loan portal I was using. So I like the deal. I like the redevelopment aspect of the area. And there are areas in my town that have been um, slated for extra development in the back. So I was going to see later on if there was more I could do with that. So uh, everything went fine in attorney review, which is what we do in New Jersey. Attorneys hash it out. Contract was ratified. We go under contract, which means we're locked in. I sent out my deposit, which was, I think, like 35 grand. I'm still waiting for that back, by the way, but I will get it back. Um, 
And uh, we did full home inspections on both of the buildings. Uh, and again, I was expecting the front to be better and the back to be worse. And the front generally was in very good shape for an older home on Main Street. So I didn't have a ton of problems with that. There were just like a little bit of anomalies that I didn't like, um, tile specifically and a couple other things. But um, I was generally okay with that. If it was just that property, I probably would have been fine. There were some things on the exterior that I wanted to do uh, more formal inspections on. And that was the big deal with the back property. The back property, there was no hot water heater. Uh, some of the baseboards were ripped out. It basically was never used. Uh, and the roof was a disaster. So I knew I'd have to fully replace the roof. There were animals in between the crawl space and the roof. You could hear them. And when my home inspector, shout out Jonathan Poffenberger of Hide and Seek Inspections, my guy, um, I pulled down one of the drop ceilings, uh, rodent poop came out. So I wasn't going to clean that. I'm not taking that on. So I was going to require that to be fully clean. So what, what I do with my clients and what I do for myself is I go through all of the home inspection reports and then I make requests. In this case, there were so many things that I needed to do extra follow-up on, some HVAC issues. I wanted an estimate on the roof. And the reason why I wanted to get all the estimates is because I'm not going to ask for all of it in repairs. If the roof was going to be I was estimating at about six grand. I probably asked for three grand. I'm very reasonable, uh, but I also am not playing games as a buyer. So I wanted to do supplementary inspections on everything just so I could have a full idea of what I was dealing with so I could make a more educated uh, request for either a full credit or repairs. So when I did that, their attorney came back in the inspection window and said that it was as is. And attorneys a lot like to use it. All properties are taken as is in general, but in the real world, if it's not listed as is on the MLS, we know that we're going to have an opportunity to make inspection repair requests. But they seem miffed that I was even making requests, and I was at a you know to them you know rightfully I was low on their price point. Remember seven ninety nine, seven forty nine. I have it at seven hundred, so I'm low. But that doesn't make their acceptance become as is. And in my mind, I was high. I really liked it for 650. I stretched to seven to get the job done. Maybe I was a little under seven, actually. Um, so uh, I'm still kicking all the tires. And once I heard that the attorney said it was as is, I basically told my attorney, again, shout out to somebody else, Ashley Molson of Molson Law Firm, my preferred attorney. And we went through it and I said, listen, I don't want to really go through all the theatrics. If they're already coming back as as is and they will consider requests, I'm just going to pass because we're not going to come to a meeting. I knew I'd be looking at somewhere in the neighborhood of 15 to 25 grand that I'd be asking for just based on what I knew from the cost. And I knew they weren't going to do that. So I just we requested what's called a mutual termination. They agreed. We signed off on it. I'll be getting my deposit back in the next couple of days, which I can then deploy into something else. So again, uh, this isn't a video about them doing something wrong. It's a lot of times a miscommunication between listing agent, seller, and the attorney. Sometimes the attorney's trying to like, you know, be more of an advocate for their client, but the attorney and the listing agent really need to be on the same page. I'm not buying. I wouldn't have made the offer at what I did. If it was as is, I would have made, honestly, if I was taking it as is, I would have been at 600, not 700. So you have to understand where you're at. And as I've always said, your uh, biggest ability in real estate and your strength is your ability to walk away. So I don't mind walking away. I mean, I'm under contract. I was under contract on two buildings that I can throw a rock and hit if I have my old 22-year-old arm. Uh, and they're right here. I really want them both still but I'm not willing to go through the BS of getting them and compromise my future value because of that. And that's why I made this video. It's an important lesson. It's not like I go back and I have any animosity. They are required to disclose some things that they read in the report. That is something I will kind of watch out for. But generally, you know, I'm done with it. I'm going to pass. Uh, we got the mutual termination. And I feel okay about that. I really do like the property. I had great plans for it, but I never like a property more than I'm willing to compromise, again, my future real estate endeavors or potential profitability on that property. 
So that's it. If you don't know me and you've sat all the way through this video and you haven't been through the treasure trove on my YouTube channel, my name is Jonathan Green. I've been investing my entire life. I'm the host of Zen and the Art of Real Estate Investing. And I also run an on-market team called Streamline Properties. We are now at Real Broker. And I hope this has been helpful. Sometimes everyone wants to celebrate all the successes in real estate, but you have to kiss a lot of frogs, which means deals do fall apart. And I'm okay with that. And if you're doing it enough, you start to understand where your tolerance level is. And uh, I would say my best advice is if something feels off and somebody gives you an out, take it every time. Have a great day.